The Dallas Stars have signed forward Ty DeLandria to a one-year extension. And on today's episode, we discuss what this contract means for DeLandria as well as the Stars organization and what the role for Ty will look like this upcoming season. All of this coming up on a Friday episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, Coming to you on this Friday, July 14th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow along on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Always, we are free and available no matter where or how you may choose to consume the show. And I apologize for no episode yesterday. Realized a good way through the editing and uploading process that There was some information that I put in there that was not true. uh, In fact, the exact opposite of true. And I didn't want to, you know, have to go back and fix it. I didn't have the time, but also didn't want to put out uh, a halfway done episode. Um, And then I was planning on redoing that episode today. But then we get the news about Ty DeLandria. uh, And if the story that I was wanting to talk about still is able to be spoken of, uh, that's probably what will come out on Monday. So I appreciate everybody's patience, but we have great news to send us into the weekend as the Dallas Stars have pretty much checked off the final big box of their offseason to-do list. Uh, The club announced on Thursday that they re-signed forward Ty DeLandria, 22 years old Ty DeLandria, to a one-year contract worth $900,000. This is a nice team-friendly deal for one of the best two-way players on the Stars roster. Really outside of Rope Hints, I would argue that Ty DeLandria is the best two-way weapon that the Dallas Stars have equipped to go on their team night in and night out. Ty DeLandria has kind of had an odd run here in the NHL when you really think about it as you know his career began back in that bizarre 2021 season due to the Stars being so shorthanded and without so many of their key players. A lot of guys got called up, uh, you know, the taxi squad, whatnot, what have you you know, getting minutes and playing games that they probably weren't expecting to be playing. Ty DeLandria played 26 games in that condensed 2021 season, and then he fully made the jump this past year and played all 82 games for the Dallas Stars, where he performed quite admirably. Nine goals and 19 assists, totaling 28 points across all 82 games. But it wasn't just the offensive numbers. Again, this is maybe one of the best two-way players on the team led all of the Stars forwards in hits uh, with 125 and also led all forwards on the team in shorthanded time on ice with 166 and a half minutes. Just a very solid player is Ty DeLandry, who can play in just about every single situation that a coaching staff could want to put him in. He also had an incredibly strong playoff performance, which really reached its peak when it mattered most in the Western Conference Final. He had two goals in that do-or-die Game 5 in Vegas of all places. This was when the Stars finally had won a game, Game 4 of that series, to extend the series. And then, you know, people thought, okay, they got their pit, you know, the, the pity win. They got the win in, at home in front of their fans. But it seemed like Vegas was going to lock up that series at home in Game 5. And that wasn't the case. And a big part of that was due to Ty DeLandria uh, having that incredible performance, his first multi-goal game of his young NHL career. And this is a good deal for Ty DeLandria, who hopefully will play a- another great season for the Stars to earn himself a bigger extension next offseason. We're going to talk here in just a little bit about how the Stars are going to make this work from a cap perspective, uh, because if you take a look at Cap Friendly and some other resources online, you'll realize that the Stars are kind of in a pinch financially, but everything should work out fine. And I think this was to be expected Uh, With Ty DeLandria being so young, he still has plenty of his career ahead of him in order to earn 
larger contracts and, and you know make plenty of more money and probably get more term as well. I think that he certainly has earned some form of extension based off of his, his play this past season. It was just unfortunate that it probably couldn't really be for more or for much longer. But I mean, this is still a, a decent upgrade from what he was making. I know he was still kind of on his ELC last season. And so it's a little bit less, a little bit more money, but it's a team friendly deal that, you know, Ultimately, even though this is kind of probably the final contract signing of the offseason, or at least the most notable contract signing of the offseason, uh, and a lot of others came before it, this deal is helping the Stars get players like Matt Duchesne and Sam Steele and Craig Smith. And, you know, maybe, you know, it could open up some doors down the road as well. But Ty Delandria taking a team friendly deal in order to help the Stars acquire some more players, but then, uh, you know, the checkbook could open up a little bit more uh, next year, especially with the cap going up across the NHL. And if Ty Delandria plays and has a great year, hopefully he can earn himself a little bit more money and get a little bit more term on his contract. And hopefully uh, that is with the Dallas Stars as he is going to continue to grow and develop his game as he continues to spend more time in the NHL. But it's an interesting situation of how this came to be. And now the question is, how are the Stars going to make their money situation work? And what will the roster construction look like in order for the Stars to be under the cap by the start of the regular season? And we're going to dive into those details and discuss that here coming up next. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. This is something, a product that I drink every single day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and a boost in energy, and AG1 delivers on both of those. I drink AG1 in the morning before making my coffee, and it helps make me feel unstoppable. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more and one simple drinkable habit. It's incredibly simple to add to your daily routine, and it's delicious. You're not sacrificing you know, flavor for health. You can get the best of both worlds with AG1. It's science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food sourced nutrients. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then you have to try AG1. And you'll get a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. I would like to thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day, for continuing to tune in throughout the offseason. A huge shout out to all the everydayers out there continuing to come back. A reminder that starting on Monday, we will be moving to a three uploads a week schedule from now until the beginning of NHL training camp. With it fully really being the offseason now, we've checked off a lot of big boxes with the draft. The majority of big name free agents have signed with new teams or been extended by their former teams. And so the, the news cycle starts to slow down a little bit, but we will still be putting out content uh, between now and training camp. It will just be coming less times a week. Likely Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be the upload schedule, but things could fluctuate and could certainly change as the summer continues to progress. But let's continue discussing this tied to Landria extension and how it works for the stars as an organization, because Eagle eyed stars fans who follow this team in depth and check things out online using resources like cap friendly or natural stat trick, especially cap friendly. In this case, they've noticed that the Dallas stars uh, with this new extension for tied to Landria, they are now over the cap. Uh, the current projected cap space for the Dallas Stars is minus $317,829, uh, which isn't the end of the world right now, as especially since the Stars aren't in season. They aren't necessarily breaking any rules here. And, and the Stars are in a position where it's not going to be incredibly difficult to get under the cap by opening night. Uh, with eight defensemen on the roster, it's likely that they will move someone from that group down to the AHL level, and there's a good chance that that is defenseman Gavin Bayreuther, who you know comes to the Dallas Stars by way of the Columbus Blue Jackets. I know that he you know 
has split some time, especially recently, with the Blue Jackets NHL club and their AHL affiliate in Cleveland. So it wouldn't be a shocker to see a guy like Bayreuther, who has been with the Stars organization before, potentially split some time. But with his contract, you send him back down to the minor leagues, to the AHL, and just that move alone would put the Stars back under the cap and would set them and have them be good to go for the start of the regular season. And, you know, the Stars, even then, you might be talking to yourself or thinking to yourself or talking amongst other Stars fans and saying, okay, well, the Stars still would not necessarily be in a great position in terms of cap space if they're looking to improve their team. Uh, whether it be a, a signing or really a trade once the season gets started. But I do think that if necessary, they could certainly make some in-season trades before or at the trade deadline. And that's really where they could you know, improve the team, as you see many contenders do. And I fully expect the Dallas Stars to be a contender this upcoming season. So this extension of Ty Delandria does not necessarily you know, put the stars in a difficult situation or, you know, doom them for a long time to come. Uh, it really is just a temporary moment where they're going to be over the cap with this negative projected cap space. They still won't have a ton once the season starts and a player goes down to the AHL. However, uh, it's, you know, still put the, you know, they're still going to be in a good spot and the roster is still very good. And it's a roster that is ready to compete and contend from the first night of the regular season. And as I've said time and time again, and as I'm sure I will continue to say throughout the offseason, if the Stars feel it necessary to continue to improve the blue line, they, they can do so via trade. And I'm sure that there will be plenty of players up for movement, especially some of the players that have been signed this offseason to those one-year deals, if not even some players who have a little bit more money and longer term attached to their contracts. Uh, the Stars will really do anything they can in their power to make sure they are competing deep into the postseason, uh, and that includes for a Stanley Cup. But, I mean, really, when you look at Ty Delandria's extension here and the contract, it's, it's quite admirable, again, that he's, you know, doing this, uh, you know, or really signing this contract and staying a member of the team. I, You know, he's doing the team a solid by taking this contract. I, I think given the way that he performed and given how he's starting to trend upward in his career, it wouldn't have been outrageous for him to expect maybe a little bit more money for his services, especially since, you know, it's only one full season in the NHL so far. But I think he showed some pretty good signs that he can be a consistent player in this league for quite some time. So I wouldn't have been shocked if he wanted more money, but I think it's it speaks volumes and it's a testament to his commitment to this team and helping them win by him taking, you know, this contract, which is a little bit of a pay grade, pay raise rather, you know, than what he was making last season. Uh, but still, you you think a guy like him at his age, you would expect him to have more. But that's a, a mature move from Ty Delandry. And I'm glad he and the organization were, were able to come to an agreement on what his contract could look like. And I hope that he does have a great season. And again, that he's able to earn himself a little bit more money next offseason. I truly do hope that it is with the Stars because I think he's a very good and solid player, a guy that might not ever be the face of the franchise, but a guy you certainly can build around and he can be a piece that you build around other star players. Jim Nill in the announcement of Ty Delandria's extension mentioned that Ty Delandria is a heart and soul kind of player. The guy who might not always get the media attention or the spotlight, but plays incredibly hard every time he's out there on the ice uh, and, you know, just does things that don't always show up in the stat sheet but are incredible, incredibly valuable to the team uh, and therefore make him valuable to his coaches and his teammates and ultimately the fan base as well. And I think Ty Delandria is a sneaky fan favorite player, uh, a guy that plenty of fans have enjoyed watching. And I'm sure as he continues to play here in Dallas, more and more fans uh, will enjoy watching his game and watching him grow as a player. He's incredibly fun to watch, and I think that he is still trajecting upward uh, in his career, but what is his role going to look like next season? As it's been discussed over the past several weeks, this is a very crowded forward room for the Dallas Stars organization. It's a good problem to have, but where does Ty Delandria fit in all of this? We'll discuss that coming up next. Third and final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Stars, continuing to to discuss the implications 
following Ty Delandria's extension with the Dallas Stars. Delandria is a unique player in the sense that he can play virtually anywhere in the lineup. And that was very much the case this past season. We saw him play sometimes on the second line. We saw him play alongside guys like Tyler Sagan. We've seen him play with Jamie Benn and Wyatt Johnston. That was a pretty effective group for a while before the arrival of Evgeny Dodonov. We saw him play on the bottom line with guys like Luke Glendinning, or Roddick Foxa. There's really not a place in the Stars lineup that you can't put Delandria and he won't be effective. Really outside of the top line, but no one's expecting him to be a top line forward. He doesn't need to be that player. That's not necessarily his skill set, and the Stars have that area covered uh, for this upcoming season where they don't have to worry about any adjustments there. But Delandria, they have the luxury of plugging him in wherever he's needed, and given his history, he will go wherever he is needed, and he will give it his all regardless of where he's playing or who he's playing with. His two-way nature makes him an effective player that the Stars have to use in their arsenal every single night. Given the overwhelming amount of talent on the Stars roster, I think that there's a high probability that Delandria ends up somewhere on the Stars' fourth line. Of course, this is subject to change even as early as training camp and preseason games, but just given the other players projected to be on the team and probably on the starting opening night roster, it's not necessarily a detriment to Ty Delandria or saying that he's not talented. It's really just you know the fact that the other guys on the team are so talented and can do a little bit more for the team, especially from an offensive standpoint. Every team needs good defensive centers, but at the end of the day, you also need forward centers. That's really what I meant, not centers, because Delandria is not always necessarily a center, you need guys that can help drive the offense too. You need your Robertsons, your Hintzes, your Pavelskis, but the Delandrias need to be there as well. So even if he is in the bottom six or even on the bottom line for the Stars, it is not saying that there is a lack of talent from Delandria. It's really saying that there is an overwhelming amount of talent now, especially with the aforementioned players who have been here, as well as the addition of guys like Matt Duchesne and really anyone else that the Stars might want to bring in throughout the season via trade. And I think that it still works out incredibly well for him on the Stars' fourth line, even with the departure of guys like Yoel Kiviranta and Luke Glendinning. Roddick Foxa is still here, and there's even the addition of guys who will also probably be bottom six players, Craig Smith and Sam Steele. I think that he would mesh really well with those guys. Clearly, he and Foxa already have some time playing together, but Craig Smith is a veteran guy who I think can adjust and adapt wherever he needs to be placed, and Sam Steele is you know, still a relatively young player finding his footing in the NHL, but I think even though he's a few years older than Ty Delandria, they're in the same age range, give or take. And I think that there could be some sort of bond and connection there as you know, they're in similar places in their career. Uh, and Sam Steele is going to be doing everything he can to be earning a big contract next season, similar to Ty Delandria. And Delandria, you know, can obviously score some goals here and there and, and drive the offense at times. But the value is just all over the place with the guy like Delandria. He can forecheck incredibly hard. You go back to the hits with him leading the team and hits for forwards. There's incredible puck pressure for a guy like Ty Delandria. He just does a lot of the little things right. And I think that's why Pete DeBoer and the team love Ty Delandria. They love playing for him. As Jim Neal stated, he is a heart and soul type of player, a guy that the fans love to watch and they appreciate seeing the effort from night in and night out. There's a little bit of issues with penalties every now and then with a guy like Delandria, but what young forward hasn't had their fair share of troubles with penalties? Hopefully, that is something that is cleaned up and taken care of as his career continues to go on. I truly believe that it will be, and it's a little bit relieving to see the stars in this position right now because this time last year, you know, we were kind of still in limbo waiting for Jason Robertson, and there were chunks throughout the summer where we're waiting for a Jay Gottinger extension. But it seems like, as I said, to open the episode, that the Stars have really checked all of their boxes. They improved the team. It might not have been in the way that we expected. I know that there's still going to be, the, oh, the defense needs to get better. We need to strengthen the blue line. And I think that's going to come in due time. I think when the trade deadline rolls around, which I know is a long ways away, I think the Stars will make the adequate moves there to strengthen the team. But let's remember that this team which is returning a lot of players, was one of the best in the regular season. And I think that this current lineup and this current construction of players 
on the roster are going to be good enough to be a playoff team throughout the regular season, or at least in a position to clinch a playoff spot. Uh, and then once they get there, it's a different game. Uh, that's when you really do need to have that strong defense secured. You need it throughout the regular season, but you won't need to lean on it as heavily during some games as you will the others. Whereas then, you know, you look at the playoffs and you're playing the same team every single night for a best of seven series. So I, I am full confidence that the Stars will take care of those defensive issues, but they check the box of improving the team. Matt Duchesne, Craig Smith, Sam Steele, those are great additions to the lineup, to the roster, all on team-friendly deals. And, you know, they, they were able to do so relatively cheap, right? They didn't have to extend some players as much as we would have loved to see Max Domi re-sign in Dallas. You re-sign him, you don't get Duchesne. You probably don't really get anybody because you run out of cap space. But then they were able to extend Evgeny Dodonov. Really, I think that's one of the other big boxes. You wanted to extend either Dodonov or Max Domi, and they were able to do one of those at a relatively good price and it's unfortunate, again, that you don't get to keep Domi. But then the last big box is Ty Delandria has been extended. And now I feel like we're just kind of playing the waiting game. We all know that Jim Nil is one for surprises every now and then. So I won't completely rule out any more moves being made. But it kind of seems like we're just in a waiting period now for training camp to come. It seems like the guys that we have on the roster and within the organization are the guys that we are going to be watching and looking for this upcoming season. But let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section down below your thoughts on Ty Delandria and his extension. Do you like the deal? Are you excited to see at least one more year of Ty in Dallas? Let me know all of your thoughts on his extension with the Stars down in the comments. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow along on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also follow along on social media. Just search Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. Remember, we are going to three uploads a week starting next week. We will be back to start things on Monday but then no Tuesday or Thursday episode. So be mindful of that going forward until the start of training camp. It'll be here before you know it. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves, and we will see you back here on Monday.